If you have a parent or a kid that needs special attention, needs to, you know, like my son's autistic, we have lots of doctors that deal with him all the time, you'll want to check out this next company. It's called CareZone, and uh, it really is a, a great way to manage all the different pieces that you have to manage when you're taking care of somebody like that. Who are you? I'm Jonathan Schwartz. I'm Chief Executive Officer of CareZone. Uh, we're a company that provides a safe place for those of us that are caring for someone in need, whether you're caring for a child or a parent or a spouse or a loved one. Um, I've been CEO for about a year and a half. Uh, some of your viewers may know me from my prior career. Uh, for the past uh, 15 years or so, I was at Sun Microsystems. Uh, and my last role there was as Chief Executive Officer. And uh, I left in about February of 2010. Yeah. And I've spent the last uh, year and a half or so really putting every ounce of energy and creativity into my new company. Uh, Cares, why did you get into this kind of company, Carezon? Uh, you know, a, a, a few reasons. First of all, just to give you a little personal detail on me, because I'm going to ask you some personal details about you. Um, <laughs> you know, I've got uh, two children and five parents between my wife and me. Uh, Four of those parents are, are past 80. Uh, one of them has a pretty uh, debilitating chronic condition. And of my two kids, one of them had a pretty significant health issue when he was growing up. And it wasn't health necessarily, it was developmental. And we had to worry about it. And so about 10 years ago, uh, my wife and I spent a lot of time thinking about, well, where do we put this stuff? And we worry a lot about where you put information, how it might be used later on. And when you're worrying about your own, my, my favorite coffee is Pete's. I went to Wesleyan University. I mean, you can go find a bunch of stuff. You just go to Wikipedia. But when it comes to my kids and my parents, I don't want that information out in the public. That's private family information. And what we found when my partner and I, a guy named Walter, went out and talked to other parents, other folks like us kind of in the sandwich generation, taking care of our children as well as more involved in taking care of our parents, we found they had the same set of issues. So we wanted to create a service that responded to that. Yeah, even if you're like me and, and fairly public with our family, we don't want the doctors, you know, the, the medical test, the urine test, the, all the right. weird stuff. We, that doesn't belong on Facebook or Twitter. Or no, and, it's, and it, it goes beyond that. It's not just the, the medical stuff. I don't want my dad's accounts and passwords out there. Yeah. Um, and yet he needs a place to manage it. Um, you know, I don't want a private dialogue I might have with uh, my wife or with a caregiver that may involve, you know, personal details. I don't want that out on yeah. the web. Nobody does. Um, and yet we're all faced with this kind of privacy conundrum because for the most part, the internet's been funded on the idea that you'll trade off productivity for privacy. And as you know, privacy is toxic to a social media company because if they allow you to be private, they get no revenue from you. Yeah. And that's because they don't view you as their customers, they view you as their product. Yep. You know, their real customers are the advertisers and that's why they spend a lot of time fighting privacy legislation. So we wanted to be the ones that really came out and said, look, we'll give you a safe private place that has no ads, that is funded by the people who are using it. And then if they love what we're doing, they'll continue paying you know, for the service. And if we begin to do something that they don't like, we have to worry about it. So for the first time, we can align our business interests and our business policy and ultimately our, our revenue model. Yeah. What does this let you do that, because right now we're managing our son with uh, email. You're right. Know? Yeah. And so all of our caregivers are always, you know, oh, we'll be there Thursday at one, comes in on email, and, some, and my wife has to keep track of that and put it into a calendar or something like that. Right. So let me give you a demo um, yeah. while we're here. So what you're looking at right now is uh, the homepage for carezone.com. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and sign in. You can see if you were going to sign in, you would specify who it is you're caring for, and then you'd provide your email address and a password you want to use to secure your account. And so rather than going through and creating uh, a new account, what I'm going to do is sign in uh, to one that exists. And by the way, this is good for uh, uh, somebody who you has a medical condition, maybe in a hospice or something like that, all the way to a kid who needs just a couple t different teachers over our, a week. Right? Our target isn't the individual being cared for. It's the individual delivering the care. Yeah. So healthcare globally is a $7 trillion market. So it's a pretty big market. But bear in mind, it also has two syllables. <laughs> Health, to me, is what the medical profession delivers. Care is what families deliver. And families are the world's oldest social network. They actually preceded the internet. And we want to be in a position to serve families. So the people that we are targeting are the individuals who are caring for someone in need, a child, a spouse, a partner, 
you know, an ailing parent, an aunt. We've talked to people across every spectrum, and we know that that's uh, definitely a complicated thing. Yep. So here is an example of an account that I've created. This is an imaginary account, but in this, my dad has just gotten out of the hospital, and so I've got a um, kind of a dialogue here. This is the journal um, feature, and I'm having a dialogue with my sister Alice and with an in-home caregiver we have stopping in named Christina. And this is a place for us to have a conversation about where are we going to manage some of dad's stuff? How are we going to manage some of his documents? How are we going to get him you know, the supplies he needs once he's out of the hospital? Um, and the way CareZone is organized, what you see on the left here are all the individuals that I'm responsible for. <coughs> so you can see my dad here along with my mom and my daughter Sally. And over on the right here, you see the helpers that are involved in helping me care for uh, the individual I selected. So this is context sensitive. So for my dad, I've got my sister, an in-home caregiver. I've actually created an, an observer account for you to go take a look later. Yep. And then for my daughter, Sally, when I click on her name, um, I obviously see here that you know I'm a single dad. Um, I've got a, a helper, a babysitter who comes in named Alicia. And I've got a different set of issues and dialogue uh, going on around Sally. So Sally, for example, um, she has a very specific set of medications, what she's on as well as what she was taking, so that we have the ability after the fact in case somebody wants to know to tell them that. By the way, all of these people have been invited in the care zone, and they have care zone on their computer, and you have care zone. So we are a web app. So we are on any internet-enabled device, any smartphone, tablet, or, or computer. And the individuals over here are invited in, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. The individuals over here are the individuals on whose behalf we're creating the accounts. Yep. And so um, let me go to my dad, and I'll give you an example of the kinds of things you might um, you know, take a look at. So obviously, with an older person, more than 90% of them over the age of 65 have a chronic condition. Yep. Interestingly, 25% of all children in the United States have a chronic ailment of sorts, everything from you know, autism spectrum disorders back to obesity or diabetes. Um, and in my uh, imaginary dad's case here, he's obviously on a lot of medications, and again, a lot of older people are. Yep. Um, there were about four billion prescriptions filled last year, four billion with a B, which is interesting for a country with a population of 300 million. And there's a whole set of data, which obviously you can see here, that you're gonna manage on behalf of my dad, but maybe I wanna have uh, access to his living will. And so he's not you know, necessarily computer oriented, but he wanted to write down, you know, these are the things that I care about, and I wanted to make sure we had a good safe place to put it. So now you don't do the legal piece of this, right? You let a no. lawyer or another software Absolutely. We, do we, that. We are for people like you and me. Um, who are just faced with dealing with the challenges of taking care of somebody. Yeah. So you're going to have to talk to a lawyer about getting a durable you know, uh, power of attorney on behalf of your parent in your state. Yeah. Um, you're going to have to talk to you know, that same lawyer about having something called a DNR, a do not resuscitate order delivered, so that nothing happens to your parents that you don't want to happen. Um, you already, by definition, have that proxy on behalf of your child because you're their parent. Yep. So you can make those decisions, but on behalf of your parent, it's a different set of issues. No, I, had, I dealt with this when my mom had a stroke, and uh, she had a DNR, and the doctor knew about it, and thank God they did, because that made things a lot, more sim a lot simpler when you're dealing with these kinds of issues. And yeah. we've spoken to folks whose parents have gone through, uh, you know, situations that they would never have wanted to go through, but, but because the child couldn't produce the DNR. Yeah. And so by making it available on a smartphone, you can just say, here's the DNR, stop it. And so it just gives you a, a little bit more empowerment. And I think the reality is for most, most of us that are in a position to have to help out with a parent, one or two of us becomes the single point of failure because it's your desk drawer in which all the information has been placed or it's yeah. in your manila folder or spiral notebook. This just gives us a, a place to put it online. So now my brother and I and my sister can both participate in making decisions on behalf of my dad and I can communicate with them, keep them up to date as well as his cousin who also wants to be kept up to date. Yeah, now this is really cool. And you can instantly invite people. So if you're sitting in the hospital and waiting for news, you can instantly in invite your sister, your brother. So I'll give you a personal aunts. situation. Um, you know, the, uh, one of my relatives found himself in an emergency room, and I happened to be there, and the doctor said, um, uh, the nurse said, what meds is he on? It is the number one question they always ask you if you're in an ER. Yeah. And I said, well, here, let me, I'll give you access to my account, but I can also just invite you. And by putting her email address in, because a lot of hospital workers now have their own email address, she instantly has access to this list of medications. Now, um, once they've looked at the list of medications, I can go over to the individual to whom I just given access, and I can take them out. Yeah. So I can give them provisional access or time-based access. Here's just go take a look at what you need, and then I'm going to take you out of the system. Same thing, by the way, applies, as you know, when you're delivering care for a child. You've got a new babysitter. 
Yep. Well, I want to give you all my emergency contact information, but you may not work out. <laughs> so I may want to take you out of the system just as readily, and that's what you know this allows us to do. No, it's really cool. What other kinds of things can you manage inside CareZone? Um, so basically, the categories here on the left are responsive to a year and a half's worth of talking, really trying to understand what is, you know, social workers, nurses, parents, dads, moms, individuals, what is it that we need to, to manage? And what, you know, we heard basically two things as we've been talking about before, uh, before this. Number one, privacy. So we do not accept advertising. Uh, no one will have access to your data. We will never sell your data. And other than the individuals you permit, our default privacy setting is, you know, you're the only one who has access. If you want to invite a helper, as I just showed you, that's your call. And there's no hooks to Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or anything no, like that? No, no. Okay. And for obvious reasons. I mean, yeah. when something very personal is happening, you don't want to alert the world and you don't want to necessarily grant those companies access to your world because there are consequences to that. Um, if you want to add someone new to care for here, um, I just push the, you know, add a, someone to care for, and I'm given three choices. I can add someone brand new, create a new account. I can create an account for myself, and we'll talk about caring for yourself in a second because it's an interesting little business conundrum. And then the last is I can care for a helper, so somebody who shows up here on the right if I don't want to have to create a redundant account for them over here on the left. By the way, how, how much does it set, cost for me to set up an account for my family? Um, so in the next 30 days, if you act quickly, um, we're making uh, three-person accounts completely free for a period of one year. So it's, uh, it's going to be priced when it's commercially available uh, at $5 a month or 50 bucks a year if you prepay. And so for that first you know, $150 to $180 uh, value for the next 30 days, folks can just go ahead and sign up. After March 15th or 16th or so, it's going to be the commercial pricing, five bucks a month. And we'll probably have volume discounts as you add in more people. As you know, um, once you're caring for one person, it's funny how you start caring for lots and lots of other people and you begin to get good at it. But again, that puts more demands on yeah, you. Yeah, I already have two people I'm ca uh, our family is taking care of. So, and several different people that will need to be in there immediately. Right, and what, and what we found is that is true everywhere on Earth, which is everyone on Earth, um, by birth or by choice, has a family. And, uh, and depending upon where you are in the world, you're more or less called upon to be a caregiver, to help out. And yeah. that's you know, always the case with children. And now increasingly, as life expectancies are moving out, that's becoming the, the case for parents as well. It's interesting that you say care for yourself because it, a lot of people don't have anybody to take care of right now, but, but you should still have a, a place that you can hand you know, to somebody you, you, else. You, you should, know. but I'll, I'll tell you about this interesting conundrum because we, you know, we, my partner and I, and I'll tell you about Walter in a little bit as well, um, we really spent a long time looking at you know, the market for taking care of yourself. And you know, the market's basically, it can be represented by a Venn diagram that has the tiniest of intersections called the quantified self community. Yep. And the, the Venn diagram is on the one hand, people who care about health. They're like you, and they tend to be healthy. No. <laughs> and, you know, but we're reasonably healthy. And then there are people who don't care about health, and almost by definition, they tend to be unhealthy. Yep. So you're faced with a market that has, on the one hand, no need for your services if they're healthy, and on the other hand, they don't care about your services because they don't care about their health. Right. And so what you're left with is this really tiny little market in the middle, which is really interesting because they do some really fascinating stuff with big data around you know, biometry. Um, but at the end of the day, there's no market, in our view, in taking care of yourself. That's not to say Weight Watchers and other folks who help you with personal goals won't do well. I think they will. But biologically, we all tend to care for the people, you know, for our parents. We tend to care for our children. So even though A, I may not be particularly focused on my own well-being, I am very focused on theirs and need help to do it. I don't yep. need to be reminded you know, uh, to kind of keep track of my own well-being. I'm often reminded that I need to keep track of where I would depend on me. Where I was going with that is y you should have a will if you're over a certain age, and, and certainly if you have any wealth to protect or move on other, other people. If you're caring for kids, you definitely need a will, right? So I, and, I think, and I think you need everyone. Other, other places, other things yeah. to hand off to other people, passwords to accounts, bank account uh, information. You bet. You know, so if you disappear, at least your family can you know, gather Absolutely. the pieces and go on. Well, and again, when you're, when you're our generation, you, you, you're not doing this because you think it's fun. I mean, you're doing this because you're all of a sudden faced with, oh my god, I don't have a DNR. Well, what's a yeah. DNR? A DNR is a do not resuscitate order. It says, if you're brain dead, don't keep me on a machine. Um, second, you have to have a power of attorney that says, in the event I'm incapable of making decisions, I want my wife.
to make those decisions on my behalf. Yeah. If that's not there, there's a real question about, okay, who's actually responsible? And lastly, I do think you need a will. Even the simplest will that just says, here's how I want what's important to me managed in my final days. Here's how I want to be you know, remembered. Um, and so there's lots of great resources out on the web that can help you with these issues. What we wanted to do is provide a safe place to not only store them, but then make them accessible to the people who are going to need to have access to them in the event something untoward does happen. Yeah. And again, that's not just for you. That's for everyone who's in a position to have to have those documents ready. And that's pretty much anybody who's in a point that you know, somebody else might depend on them. No, nope, absolutely. You used to run Sun Microsystems, big company with lots of people, lots yeah. of infrastructure. Now you're running a small company. What, yep. what's, what's that like? And what are the tools that you've used to build your company? What, what, what's that like? What so I think the, the things that you learn running a big company are, are perfectly applicable um, to running a small company. Um, number one, uh, hire the best people you can possibly find. Number two, pick really great markets. And number three, execution matters. Yeah. And that works if you're in a company of 100,000 people or if you're in a company of seven people. So right now, CareZone is seven people. Our business headquarters are in San Francisco. Our development team is up in, uh, up in Seattle. Um, my partner is one of the smartest people I've ever worked with. He's a guy named Walter Smith, who's probably uh, well known to folks around Silicon Valley. He was one of the original developers along with Steve Capps of the Newton. Yep. So you know, working with a small team, uh, first of all, it's, it's a really outstanding team and just come take a look at the service they built. Um, this is a very simplistic service, but as you know, um, building simple things is actually harder than building complicated things. And our objective is to go serve the market. Is that an editorial <laughs> on uh, Java or something? Yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and, uh, and so getting back to the tools built on Ruby on Rails, on Postgres, working with uh, Amazon and a few other uh, great uh, technology suppliers. And um, we did make choices about how to build for the broadest market possible. I mean, as I said, people all over the world are part of the family. I mean, it's the, it's the grand unifying experience of being a human being. So we expect to bring this to uh, Spanish language in the next uh, uh, 30 to 60 days. And from there, we'll have a very interesting strategy for internationalizing the product uh, and localizing the product across the world. But it's built um, to be global. Again, a great lesson from Sun. You don't know where your customers are, so yeah. you know, don't presuppose they all speak your language or understand your metaphors. Um, and in general, I, I think the, the experience of having run Sun, of building uh, some of the highest scale systems in the world and the most highly secured systems in the world, gives me a, a somewhat unique perspective, and Walter as well, he was at Microsoft after he was at Apple, um, to make sure that we can give people the comfort to know that we're going to manage their data just as we manage our own. I mean, one of the things we've been clear about is we're not just piloting this airplane, we're passengers too, so we're back in the cabin. And uh, this is where our private family information is going. So you can rest assured knowing that we're going to be just as careful with your data as we are with our own. And I bet there's lots of encry encryption and separation of databases. Absolutely. And, sure and you can read all about it in our security pages. And look, we, we want to be, and again, one of the, certainly my preferences from the Sundays, we want to be the most transparent company in the world. We want to tell you exactly what's going on, in part to keep you informed, but also to keep you engaged. Because if people have new and interesting ways of helping to manage the issues that they face, we want to hear about them. Yeah. This works fine on an iPad, you said, right? Uh, if I had my iPad with you, I would show you. I can Good. show you my phone, but your viewers aren't going to be able to see it. So yes, it works wonderfully on an iPad, an iPhone, an Android device. And right now, it's built to the mobile web, but obviously, we're going to be building uh, apps to download later on as well. And look, as far as we're concerned, you know, there's three to four billion people connected to the web right now, yeah. and a lot of them are taking care of other people, and they're looking for a safe service that they can use as a repository to connect with their families and connect with everybody that's involved in helping them get their jobs done. That's what we wanted to try to do. Yeah. This is not an electronic patient record thing. So the no. doctor uh, is not hooking their uh, systems into this. No, as I said, the healthcare market's a $7 trillion market, and it's got two syllables, uh, health and care. We think health is the province of medical professionals, and we think care is the responsibility of people, of families. Yeah. So we'll certainly connect into those systems as they emerge, but as you probably know, um, healthcare really hasn't been, you know, the industry hasn't been all that focused on um, digitization. They've been a lot more focused on, you know, therapies and surgeries and, and techniques that will really save lives in the moment as opposed to really look at the long term. One last question. Uh, how is this company funded and what's the fundamentals? So it's privately funded right now. Um, as you know, we're unveiling on Valentine's Day. And, uh, and again, the accounts will be free for 30 days only after that. And, um, you know, and we'll see. We're looking forward to, you know, there's a lot of capital available right now, as you know. It's a bit of a buyer's market if you've got a good idea and a good team. 
And we really want to tap into the best and brightest that are around. We've got some interesting advisors on our board, um, but we also want to be open to other folks who may want to help. Very right, cool. Where do we learn more about you and get in touch with you? Uh, carezone.com. And everything you'll need will be there. And, uh, and I'm Jonathan at carezone.com. If you want to send me a note directly, I'm happy to hear from you. Very cool. Thanks for coming and showing it. It is always a pleasure. It's good yeah. to see you again. Thanks. Mm -hmm.